everyone. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Treen Rayson, the crew coach on the Wellbeing Project. Today, we're going to talk about something slightly different, and that is facilitation work, which is probably a concept that the listeners haven't heard of, but what is an ability to run workshops for your crew rather than outsourcing a company to do it for you. And there's definitely benefits to that. But the objective is to increase your team's self-awareness, soft skills, and emotional intelligence. Now, Jules is a graduate from the Advanced Leadership course, and she has certainly given it her all. And it's been an absolute pleasure marking her coursework and learning from her experiences through the group coaching. And just a little bit of background from Jules, and I'll hand it over to her shortly. But welcome, Jules. Jules is a chief steward and has been working in the industry for eight years now. Jules, do you have anything to add in terms of an intro with regards to your uh, experience? Yes, Karine. So I, um, I started off in the industry as a sole steward, bless free ignorance, and worked my way up to working with a team on different boats and as chief too. And then, yeah, I decided to, because growth and the continued learning is such a big part of who I am. <clears throat> I uh, did a PERSA course and then worked as a PERSA in a program for about, about two years or so. So it's been like, for me in the industry, it's been a, a consistently progress- progressing. Yeah. And I, it's just a big part of who I am is, is learning and, and I love to learn and to grow. So I continuously have put myself in a, in positions where I'm stretching my boundaries. So it's been so wonderful to do this course with you. And I wish I had done it at the beginning of my career, but that's okay. Hindsight 2020. So <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> and I know that you love learning and growing, which I think is such an important skill to have as a leader. But more importantly, I know you want to make a positive impact as a leader, and that involves imparting your knowledge and helping others. So with running workshops or learning how to run workshops in the course, how do you think it's beneficial to the crew to start off with? Gosh, I think the first big realization that I've had is that often you step into a crew and you just expect there's this expectation that everyone just knows how to get on and they know how to communicate, they know how to deal with conflict. But actually, we've, a lot of people haven't been taught those skills. Mm-hmm. And, and it's what I've also learned is often, often crew or heads of department are too busy or they don't have the skills to, to teach and to work through these work through conflict and work through difficult situations and have difficult discussions in a way that is that builds instead of breaks down. So I think learning how to run these kind of workshops where you're creating culture, you're helping to figure out what kind of boat they want to be a part of and that the fact like learning that they are part of that process to creating the culture on board. And workshops are such a powerful tool as a, a HRD or a captain to, to train your crew to deal with difficult stuff and to deal with conflict and to realize why conflict is even happening. Sure. I cannot, I, I cannot give it enough credit in terms of and the value that, that the crew will get from running these kind of workshops with their crew is just massive and I don't know it's hard to put it in words but yes. everyone yes. should do it basically yes. <laughs> but it's interesting uh-huh. because we put as an industry put a lot of focus on developing your hard skills so flower arranging doing tablescapes etc but we certainly don't do this and I don't think from my knowledge there are leadership courses that actually teach facilitation work that is under the guest program so this is quite unique and beneficial as you disclose how is it helpful to you as a leader by running these sort of workshops kareen i think it's uh it's helpful as a leader because you 
it, it creates team cohesion. So mm-hmm. it really helps you understand your crew better or your team better and your teammates understand you. So there's this greater sense of, okay, cool. This is who I'm working with. This is, these are their values. And that through that understanding comes a lot of relief in a way. Because if you understand how someone, what really runs a person, as especially as a leader, you can lead them in a way that they feel relaxed and they feel comfortable and they feel seen and heard by you. And I think they, there really is no other way to get this kind to, to work on communication and understanding without actually sitting around a table and talking about it. So I think the value that you can get from doing that is massive. Very, <clears throat> very, yeah, it's so fascinating to just hear you share that because what came up for, for me is that a lot of applicants who do the course, they want to learn how to manage different personalities. And when we advertise for a job role, you will see a lot of chief stews put out there in their description someone with no drama what does it mean <laughs> we know what it means but there's so many underlying things ar- around that in terms of behaviors and personalities and I think if you don't understand your team and you don't practice active listening curiosity understanding their values drivers of motivation then you'll never be able to manage those different personalities <laughs> Absolutely. I think all those soft skills that you learn being leading with empathy and, and, and being able to communicate and being able to communicate in a very specific way that helps people open up and be vulnerable and get to the core of what's really going on so that you can move forward as a team. Sure, they don't really teach you that anywhere. As you say, especially in yachting, I feel it's, it's such a service oriented job. You got to know how to make these cocktails and you got to do it quickly and you've got to do the cabins. And if you work really hard and you're a contributor, then that's what most people are looking for. But it's like a, a key job description that you have to be able to do. But if your crew can't talk to each other and they're not really happy, you can run the best program in the world. I just don't think that a, like a, a team that's not doing well, firstly, there's not going to be any longevity. So you can have the best crew in the world, but if there's no, if people don't know how to talk to each other and interact in a good way that will, um, it's just not going to last. I, that's my opinion anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, with the course, obviously there's the application component to it and we're just discussing that to going live, but the importance to build one's confidence, it's all well and good to learn a course, but then when you're out in the field, you go, Oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do again? I know that happened for <laughs> me when I did my silver service course. And then once I was on board, I got so freaked out. I was like, what knife is what? What spoon is what? But I think that having the opportunity, and this is why the course is so long, but to have the opportunity to apply your learning is so crucial. And you just ran a workshop, facilitated a workshop, a values workshop specifically. And it was so fascinating for me to observe it. You did it with your father and your father's partner. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience for you? Because I know it's so scary and be overwhelming to run a workshop for the very first time. So what were your expectations coming in prior to doing the workshop? How did you feel and how did you feel afterwards? It was very nerve-wracking for me. Firstly, I think my dad and his partner both run their own businesses and they've been doing it for 40 years. So I was stepping into a space where I felt like a bit of a rookie. Like, (laughs) why would they listen to me? So I definitely had a bit of an imposter syndrome. What am I doing here? <laughs> but I was nervous. I was just a little bit, when I'm nervous, I overprepare. So I feel like I was very prepared for the call. And the beautiful thing about running a workshop is you really have to understand your material. So the value of running 
running a workshop at, like I did, the values with my dad and Michelle, who run guest houses together. So we were trying to create sort of a value structure for them in their business that they were running together and that I'm a part of. Yeah, this. I knew that the the value that you get from doing this work is huge. So my expectation was that hopefully we would we would create some beautiful agreements where we could work together in a way that was supportive. We all understood that we were going to listen to each other, let each other have their say, um, uh, trust trust each other, create a safe space so you can be honest and open about how you're feeling, and then. And, and then also, despite running businesses for 40 years, they haven't really delved into, into values because they are smaller run organizations. I, I was speaking to, to my sister about this. She works for a big corporate and they put so much money into growing the teams and team building and leadership courses. And I think corporates really understand that it's about the people and this hope company in particular. And not only that, Karina, what I found interesting was when there's conflict in a team, um, the HR department will immediately speak to the person and say, what's going on? There's so much support that's given to these people. <clears throat> anyway, but it's just fascinating to know we're in yachting, which is like, it's there's so much money in this industry. And there's just no... There's not a lot of investment in building crew up and pers- personal development, leadership courses. Obviously, now you've produced this beautiful course that is super valuable. Um, but there's no real awareness of it coming from a top down on a boat, unfortunately. It's this is my boat. This is how I run it. And, but back to the values course with my dad and Michelle, yeah, running the course itself, I was very nervous, but I can't believe the sharing and the value that, that, that they both got out of the course. And it was surprising to me that they had taken so much on board and and got a lot out of it. In fact, I think, I think one of them said, you go through life, so it's nice to take a step back. And actually really think about it. <laughs> yes. yes, that's so true. And I also noticed, which was so sweet, your father. He was and this shapes leadership. And I know you've respected my your father because of his leadership. And he was accountable for his behavior. And he said, I tend to interrupt. And I think that was one of the group guidelines was not to interrupt. And I saw him about to interrupt and he held himself back. <laughs> Which is really important to do. <laughs> and I think that just reiterates why we have those group guidelines because it provides that psychological safety so that people can freely talk. And I think that is so, so important. But just, yeah, your father, we even started the session, the homework activities you gave him, he was like, whoa, this is so amazing. My values, I read this about myself. And then he moved <laughs> and he moved away from himself and self-leadership to the team. And what does the team need? I, yeah, it was hilarious because he's such a bottom liner. He, he wants to know, okay, he has a theory. How do I put it into practice? And how are we actually going to use this in our business? So it was such a cool, it was such a good question because... I feel like obviously when you're running a workshop on the boat, it's like, okay, what's important here? How are we going to use this? And that's what's really cool with the course is that you teach us how to have that values course, how to use it with your team and then how to implement going forward. Yeah. And then, yeah, after the, after the values workshop, I didn't want to rewatch the, watch the replay because I was just feeling so. Nervous even about what I just discussed, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it again and just see how you would yeah, I did. You are a natural, <laughs> a natural. It's hard to do, okay. but as you said, you do it from a learning perspective. So I highly recommend us. Jules, thank you so much for coming back on Yachting International Radio for the second time. And I know there's going to be more of you for yeah, sharing your experience and obviously opening other people's minds to what is possible 
in our industry and the change that you can make. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Green. Absolutely no problem. So lovely to chat. <laughs>